All right, here we are on a Cruiser 420. Uh, we've just installed a new inverter, uh, inverter charger. And uh, what I want to talk about next is what are the common pitfalls or installation problems with doing an inverter charger? Um, first problem is that inverter chargers come with really thick manuals and most people simply don't think they need to read them. All the instructions are in the manual, but unfortunately most people think that it's not required to actually read the manual and they just figure it out. I would advise against anyone doing that and strongly encourage that owners take the time to read the manual and make sure they follow all the steps. Because here's the gotcha. An inverter charger is gonna work like a car is gonna work without a seat belt, without tail lights, without headlights. It's gonna function, but it's gonna be unsafe. And so here are the things that we commonly see when we do electrical audits on boats. First thing is that an inverter charger should and absolutely must have what's called a master disconnect DC switch. And that's an on-off switch. And that on-off switch is there to prevent the inverter from creating AC power accidentally whenever you're playing on your AC system. This is essential because inverters have something called what's named load sense. And load sense is a mode in the inverter, so it's efficient. So it actually, it's on, but it's actually not creating inverter power and it's waiting to create power if it ever senses a load. So that load might be five watts and it's normally settable by the owner. And so you could be creative and you're thinking, oh, look, I've got this. I'm going to put a polarity tester in my AC outlet. I see no power. I'm going to put a magic wand that measures you got at Home Depot and I'm going to put it nearby. I see no AC at the AC outlet. So now you're thinking, oh, great. My inverter is not on. I've confirmed it. I've done all my checks. Let me change my GFCI outlet on my boat. Pretty benign task. What you don't realize is that the inverters has an intelligence and it's waiting and it's pulsating and waiting to find and measure a load of maybe five watts whatever you set. You disconnect the shore power, the GFCI, you suddenly put your finger between the hot and the neutral, and now suddenly the inverter measures because that resistance is definitely more than five watts, and then suddenly the inverter kicks on, and now you get electrocuted. That's why inverters are pretty complicated and sophisticated, and that's why it's essential for you to actually always have what's called a master DC disconnect switch. So whenever you're actually gonna play on the AC system on your boat, you absolutely want to have the DC disconnect switch on. The next thing is actually having a fuse. And the fuse is not anywhere on the circuit, it has to be at the beginning of the circuit. So follow the recommendations, absolutely, from the manufacturer, and put a fuse right at the beginning of the circuit. In this instance, a Class D 250 amp fuse. And then the last thing that's commonly missed on the DC side of an inverter is actually what's called a chassis ground. A chassis ground has to be, on a marine installation, has to be one size smaller than the largest cable size feeding the inverter. Most people don't understand why, and they just basically end up putting a 10 gauge um, it's really essential that you actually have one cable size smaller. And because you might have a fault on an inverter, not just on the AC side, but on the DC side. And if you have a fault from the positive to the case for whatever reason, and you have a 10 gauge back, you've got two watt in, 10 gauge back, that wire that's supposed to act as a safety, as a chassis ground, is actually going to become effectively almost a fuse because it's going to be running all the current right through a 10 gauge. And so that's a real big problem. So those are the three things to watch for on the installation of an inverter. You wanna have a master DC disconnect switch. You wanna have the appropriate size fuse at the beginning of the circuit. And you also wanna have a chassis ground.